prokaryotic cells. Now, if you look at here the translocation into the ER, what we can see here. So it's a kind of detail stage because you know translocation inside the ER is the first common thing that should occur, right? So for that reason, actually, uh, the, the 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 translocation can occur usually uh, most commonly is the co-translation translocation. That means uh, ribosome is sitting onto the ER onto the membrane of rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER as we all know RER. Very sorry because it's kind of giving me trouble. So it's very sorry whether presentations are going wrong in this case. Uh, which is the co-translational uh, translocation of R E R. So in that case, what we know that uh, so let me erase the background. Okay. Okay. So what we can see here that that co-translation uh, translocation is there, which is uh, ribosome is synthesizing the polypeptide chain and as the polypeptide chain is synthesizing it is inserting itself uh, into the ER through uh, the ER uh, uptake complex which is made up with a protein called 661 complex right so this is called co-translational translocation because as these proteins are translocated during the translation process that's why it's called co-translational -translo translocation because both these things are going on simultaneously at the same time right but again they require certain proteins proteins like SRP or signal receptor protein uh, or signal re response uh, sequence protein so those proteins will help and guide uh, this uh, this uh, nascent polypeptide chain which is just formed and synthesized from ribosomes and just coming out of the ribosomes and uh, there are protein receptors called SRP receptors that are present onto the surface of ER membrane you are ER membrane and that SRP will interact with the SRP receptor and then they will transfer this whole polypeptide chain along with this signal sequence which is here in the pink color inside uh, the ER lumen in case of uh, other other way of transferring this is the post translational translocation in the post translational translocation uh, once the protein is completely synthesized inside uh, the cytosol uh, which is outside the ER obviously then this protein will be taken by a helper protein onto the SEC complex or the, or the transfer complex called the SEC61, SEC62 which is the transfer complex here right so for that reason uh, so that protein that helper protein is called BIP right or BIP protein so this protein will be taken it will attach with the nascent polypeptide it will bring the nascent polypeptide to another protein called SEC63 now once they are bound with SEC63 then they will transfer this nascent peptide actually the signal sequence onto the uh, SEC61, SEC62 complex once that's done then BIP will cleave the nascent chain from its signal sequence as you can see here it will cleave the nascent chain from its signal sequence and this stage of transferring uh, this nascent chain uh, from the SEC6162 complex to this BEEP uh, protein uh, required uh, ATP, right? So once ATP is required, they will cleave it out and then the protein will be inserted into the ER. And we know we don't need to bother about the folding of the protein inside the ER because ER is designated to do that. It is having all the necessary machineries to do that inside. So it's kind of very easy, guys. And that's how it's done.